So, shall we get on with it? As you wish, madame. Thank you. Oh, Merle, I love it when you play. Play something else for us, won't you, darling? My pleasure, Ruth. By the way, you do look like a work of art. Oh, Merle, you sure do know how to treat a girl. I wanted to tell you, I'm leaving town. Why? When? Where are you going? I'll be spending the winter tickling the ivories in Palm Beach. I leave by train at 8 a.m. I'll miss you. I would follow you if I could. <laughs> I think your husband would like that very much. I'm starting to think. I don't even care. Oh, sure you do. Hmm, what do you think? A trip to Palm Beach would be lovely this time of year. Sun, sand, beautiful people, and the wealthy elite without a care in the real world. Reminds me of those George Petty cigarette ads that were too popular in the day. Older bald men with ever so gorgeous younger women dressed to kill. Those advertisements were a prelude to his time at Esquire magazine, where he perfected the petty girl. You know her. Long legs, big smile, almost always on the phone and quite frequently wearing toe shoes like a ballerina. So what do you say? Shall we see how the other half lives? How are you? Ruth, how are you? What a wonderful surprise. Nice digs. A girl could get used to this. Did you miss me? Tell the truth. You're practically dripping in women. Oh, Ruth. You know, it's one of the hazards of the job. It doesn't stop me from missing all beautiful you. How did you get here? With Mo. Don't tell anyone, but he brings in the hooch to this joint. We came down on the train. I didn't know if I'd find you. Where is Mo now? Probably napping. Poor old guy was out half the night. God knows where with God knows who. I don't ask. I'm starting to think I don't care. Well, of course you care. Maybe you could take my mind off it all. I'd sure like to try. I'd sure like to let you. Ruth! 
What the hell? I knew it! I ought to break both of your legs! Mom, stop it, you big oaf! That's enough! It isn't what it looks like. Oh, really? That's good. Because it looks like you were about to smooch with the woman that belongs to me. Mom, stop it! I am your wife, not your possession! Oh, really, Ruth? Well, who takes care of you and your career and everything else you need, huh? Oh, it doesn't mean you own me. Well, maybe I do, Ruth. What? You want this poor slob, a musician? Really, Ruth? Well, I'm not having it. You hear me? Stop! Calm down! Well, it's too late for that. You made your choice. Mo, stop it! Come to your senses! Look around! You won't get away with shooting me here! Oh, I wasn't gonna kill you, babe. I can't live without you. But the piano man here, he's gotta go. I warned you, Ruth. Nobody messes around one more. The Great Love Triangle, one of life's little mysteries. You would think we ought to know better than to get involved, but people always do. The red-hot romance of the forbidden is nearly impossible to resist or predict. Artists are notorious for coloring outside the lines of the ordinary life. Why, when I was at Brown and Bigelow, they were still talking about an artist who put B&B on the map. So much so that they paid him a small fortune $10,000 for a commission. I don't have to tell you, most of us don't garner that kind of cash, and that was nearly 100 years ago. All the cell calendars, all well, it worked. They said that in the 1920s, one third of the homes in our country had daybreak hanging on their walls. Maxville Parish. His paintings were the stuff of fairy tales. His life was too. His estate in New Hampshire was the destination for the creme de la creme of polite society. Artists, musicians, politicians, all the great minds of the day would find their way to lively dinner parties at his fabulous home. He was prolific and brilliant and a huge success as an artist, which I can tell you from experience is no small feat. Funny thing about him too, he lived much of his life in what the rest of us would call a love triangle, a wife, a husband, and a mistress all coexisting on the same estate for over 30 years. Aren't you curious? I know I am. I've always wondered how that might have happened. I'm sure there's a perfectly logical explanation for it. But then again, is there ever logic in matters of the heart?